الحمد لله الذي خلق الإنسان وجعل له العقل واللسان وأنتقه وعلمه الكلام نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونشكره تعالى ونستغفره ونستغيثه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وصفيه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة النبي الأمي الذي أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم وعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانته عما نهى أنه وزجر One of the most impressive qualities of the human being, a quality which elevates him above his fellows and sets him apart, is courage. <coughs> True courage is rare enough that when we see it, we immediately recognize it and applaud it, regardless of where we find it, even if it is amongst our rivals and enemies. In the present day, the most common place to find it is on sports fields. Whether in the batsman bravely facing down the fast bowler or the rugby player putting his whole body on the line to prevent a score. But courage in the pursuit of what actually brings about meaningful change, courage in the pursuit of truth in a world where falsehood reigns supreme, that is rarer than hen's teeth, and when it is seen, is to be treasured, and its people raised up and followed. For that courage is not purely physical or instinctual, it is courage following reflection. It is courage whereby the risks and consequences are known, and yet none of those concerns prevent you from moving forward. And aside from those with nihilistic tendencies, it is courage that can only come from absolute trust in Allah. It is the courage shown to us by the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. No threat held them back and no odds did they consider too great to overcome. They did not fear falsehood, nor the enemies of Allah. They feared what their Lord would say to them if they ignored the truth and let it and let falsehood stand unchallenged their fear was reserved for their lord allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladhina yubalighuna risalat allah wa yakhshawnahu wa la yakhshawna ahadan illa allah the translation of which is those who convey allah's message and fear him fearing no one except Allah. Now in the present day, the strongest weapon the human being has in our current circumstance as Muslims is the tongue. Or for some, the keyboard or the pen. But by extension, the tongue. To speak the truth and champion the deed, to strip away the lies and cut to the chase, this is no small matter, especially when all the apparati of state, of media, and modern day society are lined up against you. And there are very few who are willing to do this. The majority are happy or content, maybe not happy, but content to toe the party line and maintain the status quo, fearful of what others will think of them. Fearful that they will be tarred with a brush that might make them pariah in the societies they call home. 
That fear, real or imagined, paralyzes them and causes them to obscure truth and promote falsehood. Hiding away or apologizing for elements of their deen that appear barbaric and unpalatable to modern humanist sensibilities. And this fear also prevents them from speaking up on behalf of those who have been denied a voice, a number increasing by the day as legislation becomes more draconian and basic civil liberties are stripped away with increasingly spurious justifications. And that is why it is so impressive to see those who do stand up and make themselves heard. Those who say the truth no matter how bitter. Those who defend those who cannot defend themselves even when they are accused of something indefensible. Abu Dhar, the famous companion of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, relaying a list of instructions given to him by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa amarani an aqula bil haq. وَإِنْ كَانَ مُرَّا وَأَمَرَنِي أَلَّا أَخَافُ فِي اللَّهِ لَوْ مَتَلَائِمُ He commanded me to say the truth, even when it is bitter. And he commanded me to not fear the blame of any blamer. This is one of the legacies we have received from our Shaykh, rahimahullah, who was never afraid to speak the truth, as his books and articles bear witness and never afraid to recognize and affirm those who did the same or who had the potential to do the same and champion them. Such people are the true leaders of this ummah. They are the sabiqoon, those who have gone out in front and put their necks on the line. They are the mujahidun. The Prophet ﷺ said, Afdalul jihad kalimatu sidqin inda sultanin ja'ir. The best form of jihad is speaking the truth to the unjust ruler. Speaking out against injustice wherever they find it. Those who do this, we must step up and join them. We must not leave them to struggle on their own. Even if we cannot find it within ourselves to speak as they do, we must offer them our support. We must make sure that the right audience hears them. We must give them the benefit of our knowledge, our wisdom, and our nasiha, so that their brave words can always be directed in the best possible way, and in the best possible direction, and at the best possible time. For knowing which truths to highlight at which time, and what people need to hear them, for them to be galvanized and sent along the, wrong, the right path, that is not always straightforward. So we have a role even when we ourselves may not be the ones who are speaking. And we must work to elevate them so that their voices can be more widely heard and raise them up. And those who show the right qualities offer them up our allegiance on that basis. Indeed, as part of the first pledge of allegiance, of bay'ah, of this community, the companions of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam agreed to, they, they said, نَقُولُ بِالْحَقِّ أَيْنَ مَا كُنَّا لَا نَخَافُ فِي اللَّهِ لَوْ مَتَلَائِمُ Mirroring what I said about Abu Dhab before, pretty much. That we speak the truth wherever we are, and that we not fear the blame of any blame. Speaking the truth is part of our contract with our Lord and His Messenger. So we ask Allah that he give, him an, give us an understanding of that truth. For the truth will come and will be understood by those whose hearts are clear and whose intentions are clearly for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with no mixing of intention. The truth is our most effective tool and our most effective weapon for no amount of falsehood can stand in its way as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in a number of places in his book. For example, where he says, The translation of which is, Rather, we hurl the truth against falsehood, and it cuts right through it, and the falsehood vanishes right away. So do not be seduced by illusions. Do not be intimidated. 
Do not be fooled by those who twist the words of Allah and manipulate them to suit their own ends, to maintain their own status and position. Rather, stick with the people of truth and know the truth. They are our guides and leaders. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us ever in their company and make us have that courage to stand up and speak the truth when it needs to be said. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين والتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ما استطعتم واسمعوا وأطيعوا وأنفقوا خيرا لأنفسكم يا عباد الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله وطاعته وأحذركم وإياي معصيته ومخالفته. As we have seen from the first footpath, the tongue has the potential to be our greatest weapon and most effective tool. It has the potential to raise us up in the eyes of our Lord and bring us into His innermost circle. But it also has the opposite potential. For if we misuse it, it can destroy us and drag us down and push us down, deep down, into the furthest and deepest reaches of Jahannam. The tongue is dangerous indeed. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Mu'adh ibn Jabal in a hadith I'm sure many of you have heard, أَلَا أُخْبِرُكَ بِمَلَاكِ ذَلِكَ كُلِّهِ فَقَالْ بَلَا يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ فَأَخَذَ بِلِسَانِهِ وَقَالْ كُفَّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا وقال يا رسول الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به قال فكلتك أمك يا معاد وهل يكب الناس في النار على وجوههم إلا حسائد ألسنتهم The Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said to Mu'ad ibn Jabal رضي الله عنه Should I not tell you about that upon which this whole matter rests? He replied, yes, Messenger of Allah. So the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took hold of his tongue and said, restrain this. So Mu'ad radiallahu an said, Messenger of Allah, will we be taken to task for the things that we say? The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, and this first, the first oath that he makes was a common oath among the Arabs, may your mother be bereaved of you, Mu'ad. Is there anything other than that which is reaped by the tongue that causes men to be dragged through the fire on their faces? And the Messenger of Allah وسلم, also said, The majority of the wrong actions committed by mankind come from their tongues, or on their tongues, or by what their tongues have wrought. The tongue wags, and we find ourselves saying things we may never have intended to say. Especially if we keep the company of those who allow their tongues to run loose. This is not the way of the mu'min. The mu'min, the believer, guards his tongue. He measures his words. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna lisan al-mu'min wara'a qalbi fa idha arada an yatakallama bi shayt yatadabbarahu bi qalbihi thumma amdahu bi lisanih. The tongue of the believer lies behind his heart. Whenever he wants to say something, he engages in tadabbur, he reflects on what he is going in to say with his heart before letting his tongue speak. And if your heart tells you those words are harmful, those words bring no benefit, then do not let them pass your lips. Instead, Remain silent or replace them with something good, like the remembrance of Allah. The Messenger of Allah said, 
Let whoever believes in Allah and the last day say something good or remain silent. This is the way of the Muslim, as the Messenger of Allah said in another famous hadith. Al-Muslimu man salim al-Muslimuna min lisanihi wa yali. The Muslim is the one from whose tongue and whose hand other Muslims are safe. The Muslim is the one from whose tongue and whose hand other Muslims are safe. This applies especially in times of fitna, in times of great change and upheaval, in times when there is changings of the guard. It is all too easy to let yourself get carried away in the heat of the moment and say something you later look back on and regret. Always remember that the only circumstances, the only circumstances in which it is acceptable to say something bad of another Muslim is either to warn Muslims of someone who is bringing false beliefs or when you are standing in front of the Qadi and giving evidence in the court. Otherwise, all you are doing is slandering him or backbiting, even if what you say is true. And backbiting, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, is akin to eating the flesh of your Muslim brother. It poisons your heart and poisons the hearts of those to whom you speak. And listening to another do it is equally destructive, especially if you let their comments slide. There are those who revel in the spreading of fitna, in the telling of tales, in instilling doubts in the hearts of their listeners regarding brothers and sisters of the Muslims. You must avoid their company like the plague. The Prophet ﷺ said, "Ala ukhbirukum bi shirarikum al mashaoon bin namima al mufsidoon bin al ahibba wal baghoon lil bara al anat." Shall I not tell you of those who are the very worst amongst you, the most terrible of people, those who go about spreading tales? Those who seek to cause mischief between friends and those who love each other. Those who desire to lead innocent people into wrong action. They are pure poison. Do not associate with them. And if you are unfortunate enough to find yourself in their company, or, fo or indeed foolish enough to bring them into your circles, the only antidote to their poison is to speak out in the defense of those they have defamed. The Prophet ﷺ said, Man radda an irdi akhi bil ghayb, radallahu an wajhi nara yawm al qiyam. If you defend the honor of your brother in his absence, Allah will defend your face from the fire on the day of qiyam. This is the job of the Muslim, to always speak well of our brothers and defend those who are not present. Our words should heal and connect, not poison and rip apart. We put our brothers back together when they have fallen down. We do not put the boot in and deepen their woes. We use our tongues in ways that strengthen this ummah, not in ways that weaken it. This is how it should be, and this is what we ask our Lord. May Allah make our tongues instruments for truth and not instruments for falsehood. May he make them the means for us to gain his pleasure and avoid his anger. May he make them witnesses for us on the Yom al Qiyamah and not witnesses against us. And may he protect our communities from those who misuse their tongues and use them to spread lies and discord and keep those people from our circles. And looking to the wider Ummah, where many are being tested through loss of life, home, and wealth, and putting everything on the line in the way of Allah. We ask Allah to give them victory and success and the best of seals. We ask Allah especially for our brothers and sisters in Palestine, Sudan, Kashmir, Myanmar, Uyghuristan, and all the places of the Muslims known and unknown where they are beset by enemies. We ask Allah to foil the plots of those enemies, visit a humiliating defeat upon them, and grant a lasting victory to those who have remained steadfast upon his way. 
We ask Allah to give victory to his deen. We ask Allah to strengthen the people who are on his way. We ask Allah to place the hand of the Muslims uppermost. Oh Allah, unlock the hearts of the peoples of these lands and bring them to your deen in their droves. Oh Allah, as has always been your sunnah throughout existence, strengthen this great deen of yours through its enemies by opening the hearts of them and their children and their children's children to the deen of Allah. Oh Allah, let us see might restored to this ummah and see the deen fully restored in our lifetime. O oh Allah, keep us ever on the Sirat al Mustaqim. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al Nabi. Ya ayu aladina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wardu Allahumma ala al Khulafa al Rashidin wa ummahat al Muminin. Wa sa'ir al Sahabati ajma'in. Wa tabi'im wa tabi'im wa tabi'im wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsanin ila yawm al Deen. اللهم اهدي ولاة أمور المسلمين لما يرضي ولاتباع سنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم وثبت أقدامهم على الصراط المستقيم وثبت أقدامهم على الصراط المستقيم وثبت أقدامهم على الصراط المستقيم وأصلهم يا رب العالمين اللهم بارك على أميرنا وعلى شيوخنا وعلى جميع أمراء المسلمين اللهم بارك على المسلمين في هذه المدينة وافقهم لما تحبه وترضى يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين واخذ الكفر والكافرين وانصر المجاهدين في سبيلك واجعل كلمتك هي العليا وكلمة الكفر هي السفلى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله